Welcome to the Intuitive Websites Internet Marketing Podcast, bringing you the country's top podcast on the subject of internet marketing. I'm your host, Glenn Thayer, and I'm here with CEO of Intuitive Websites, Thomas Young, and internet marketing specialist, Dennis McCarthy. How's it going, guys? Going good, Glenn. Hey, Glenn. Wonderful. Well, today we're going to kind of do a greatest hits of web marketing. We've been doing these podcasts now for about a year, and I think we're up to, what, 22, 23, somewhere around there. So we're going to kind of go through what we've learned, what we've talked about with all of our listeners out there, and really make sure we kind of bring it back to basics and do a little refresher on what we've been talking about. Let, let's let's get to the basics. Let's start talking about that. What 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 should our listeners make sure ultimately bottom line that they must have on their website? Well, I think number one is strategy. It's the answer to the question: Why do I have a website? What is this website going to do for me in very realistic, uh, practical terms? And, it's, and, and just having a website because you think you need one or because everyone else has one or because you had a brochure and you wanted to have a website too, that's not a strategy. That that's basically, what MySpace is for. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's right. Have that, a MySpace page. That's, called, that's not a strategy. That's, that's called just, just getting, getting it done to get it out of the way. And getting it done to get it out of the way is, is, is not going to help your business. So you've got to really have a firm answer to why I have a website and what that website's going to do for me. And really, the key here is a simple, straightforward approach. It's really not the most complex thing in the world. And, um, and, then, and then when we talk in these podcasts about what to do on a website, you're going you're gonna to hear people say, well, of course, that's common sense. Everyone would do that, or we know we should be doing that. But it's not done. Well, you know, it's it's funny that you, we mentioned kind of keeping it back to basics. If you really look at what the top sites are, and what was the website that somebody can go to to find out what the top websites in the world and the U.S. are? Alexa. Alexa.com. How do you spell that? A L E X A dot com. Okay, and that'll click on country, and then you can click on the top sites in the U.S. or the world. And it's amazing. I mean, you know, the top the top three or four websites are, uh, you know, Yahoo, Google, MySpace, MySpace MSN, uh, YouTube, and so forth. You know, it's funny. We look at that. We talk about back to basics, and you, you talked about strategy, having a strategy. Those websites are not sexy. <laughs> they're not they are not that's a great, great looking websites they, they might have sexy content they, on there, they have sexy <laughs> content but they're not but they're not put together to where hey graphically this is the most graphically intense and beautifully laid out site that i've ever seen they make sense oh the the yahoo portal is just is just great i mean it's the, it's simple and the, to the point the simple tabs the simple approach and of course google i mean look at google yeah it's I'm got it, it's <laughs> nothing. There's nothing there. Most of Google is white white space. The only artistic element to Google is how they might change their logo on a holiday or something. So no, yeah, simplicity is so so important. Well, you know the Google mantra is "Do no evil." That's one of the things they tell all their new employees that they don't want to do anything that is counter to what people want to see on a website. So that's where it comes down to really looking at it. If your website's not an artistic website, if you are not an artist that is putting out artistic content, make sure that all of your design and everything is relevant to what's going on. Because I personally, moderating these podcasts for the last year, it's really brought to lot to my mind that it doesn't have to be sexy. It has to be functional, and it has to generate revenue. Yeah, or, I think or should I say generate generate conversions that generate revenue? But functionality is is key. Functional functionality should be over the sexiness or the beautiful part of the website. And and so yeah, I think if we had to sum up what we're trying to do here in 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 this podcast is is get results through simplicity and through the right strategy. I would have to add to that: have great content. Um, Identify your target market and find out what they're looking for and offer it to them via your expertise and your content. Great content is the most important thing and uh, make it scannable. That's right. I mean, that's so important to say because uh, we still see a lot of blocks of text on websites. And, and, and Dennis, I mean, you, you and I both know what people do with blocks of test, <laughs> text. I mean, they. So, what would be the ideal? Somebody goes onto a, a home page. How much text should be there? Should it be half a paragraph? If they need to go, hey, here's who we are, here's what we do, if it's not absolutely clear, how much text should really be on a homepage? I've gotten to where I don't use blocks of text at all. I'll use headlines and bullets exclusively. 
with maybe a sentence introducing a, a, a bunch of bullets. It's just people do not read it, and you know it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. And it, and it depends on the industry you're in, because you might be in an industry where you use a lot of photos with captions. And we, Dennis and I work, uh, we do a lot of work in, in real estate and in home sales. And, in, and, and when people look at homes, they're buying homes, they want to see photos and captions. Very straightforward. I, I think that, that content on the front end of a website should be scannable. Absolutely, if you're going to look at it. Now, underneath that scannable content, you could have volumes of, of information, encyclopedias of information. Yeah, white papers or whatever else absolutely. they need. If you're in a really technical field, put scannable content out there and then link to a PDF. For the guys that really need to dig deep and look at the, the heavy-duty stuff, but it has to be scannable. These rules apply to everybody, regardless of industry. How should menus be sh be set up? Well, first of all, you should know what they mean. A lay person should know what they mean at first glance. Do the, do the grandma test. Have grandma go to the website, look at the nav structure, and if grandma can tell you where all those links lead, you know you're on the right track. And we know from user testing that people really love to hang out in a well-defined uh, navigation system, usually on the left side of the page, sometimes on the top nav. But people will just, that's where they'll hang out. Their mouse will just sit on that nav system as they click around looking for what they want. It's the one thing that they are guaranteed to read, your menus. Your nav menu. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, they're, you're painting a picture of the, the character and the personality of your website with your menus and with your pictures. That's what people are going to leave with. We're talking about leaving websites. One of the biggest things that I've gotten from these podcasts is Google Analytics and being able to utilize the information that's put in there to, to get the feedback to make sure what's going on online on my websites is appropriate. Or yeah, absolutely. You want to use stats from your website to paint a picture of what's happening, what users are doing. Users come to your website and immediately start to vote. They start to give you, you know, what they like, what they don't like. And, and what we see too often, which, is, which is, is too bad, is what most people do is they come to a website and leave within about 10 to 15 seconds. And that is not what you want users to do. You want them to stay, use a very simple, easy-to-use nav system, and to have some sort of a uh, what we call a sales funnel or some kind of, kind of funnel so that we can predict the path that most people will take. Can you feel the funnel? That's a key question you should ask when you're looking at a web page. Can you feel the funnel? You should be feel, feeling yourself being pulled into some sort of relationship building mechanism. Yeah, that, that's true. It could be an e-commerce site. It could be a service-oriented site. It sign could up be, for our newsletter. Sign up for the newsletter. For anything from a sign up to a newsletter to contact us to buy a product. Webinar. To, to do a webinar. Anything that engages the user with you with your business. That's what you want this website to do. And it needs to be very clear. And the stats should support that your funnel is working. Absolutely. And, Glenn, you mentioned Google Analytics. We have a news flash. Can you do a little news music? <laughs> Google Analytics, um, a while back, bought some company that specializes in the visual display of statistics and information. And uh, nobody could figure out why they bought the company. Well, all of a sudden, this past week, uh, Google Analytics has been upgraded with all these cool new capabilities and reports and views and charts. So we, we highly recommend if you don't use Google Analytics currently, you have an even better reason to go do it now because it's free, and it really is some of the best uh, statistics uh, you can get for your website. I think Dennis is a little excited about this because I love it. I'm looking at the uh, our, our little audio meter here, and it's definitely off the charts when he talks about this. He's excited. <laughs> He's excited. It's free, and it's good. It's free, and it's good, and, it, and it's absolutely something that should be a part of your monthly reporting for your website. We recommend that once a month you sit down and look at the results. You know, and you look. At, we we did a podcast on stats, so I'm not going to get into the details, but. Spend time with this. It's fabulous data. And what we like about it so much is it's goal-oriented. So we talk about the importance of feeling the funnel and, and measuring your funnels. Google Analytics is completely goal-oriented. So you can say, I want to find out how many people are going into my funnels and exactly where they're dropping off. Google Analytics is designed to do that. Well, you know, And speaking of Google Analytics, what it leads us to is we talked about newsletters, you know, as far as being able to make sure people are in the right funnel. Mm -hmm. The newsletter is awesome to be used in conjunction with Google Analytics. I mean, how, how great is that, that you can send out an e-newsletter to your list and you can get immediate feedback on what's going on with that? Here's the thing about newsletters. 
if you're going to have one, do it right. So many people we see are sending a newsletter out, and it's like throwing it out into the wind. You just don't know what happens to it afterwards. If you're going to do a newsletter, you have to have articles that link to landing pages, landing pages with funnels of their own that have a, a most desired user response. Your, your newsletter articles have to lead somewhere that can be tracked and that can um, attend to the bottom line. And it also has to have a call to action, too. I mean, most websites that are set up there are in the business of making money or generating a sale at the end. Absolutely. Absolutely. That ties into the whole concept of the sales funnel. And, and this is more important with e-commerce sites than maybe anything else. Uh, you know, the People that are on the web looking and shopping for products, if you don't have some differentiator that's going to bring them in, They'll go to, they're going to go to a competitor site. There's no question. There needs to be something there. And that, that could be content on how to use the product. You know, it could be information and, and, uh, and add-on products that go with it. I mean, but it has to be something different to set you apart. Well, one other thing on newsletters before we move on is there, there's two that I know of, and, and guys, you may know more than me as far as other ones, but the, the two big ones right now for, for newsletters sending out is Constant Contact and Vertical Response. I know Constant Contact, I have used that. That has all the analytics as well. So you can go through, and once you send it out, it tells you how many people have opened it, what did they, what links did they click on that newsletter. They actually yeah. will track that. However, the Google Analytics is going to jump in on your website to tell you where people bounced once they landed from the e-newsletter, where did they go. Absolutely. That's good stuff. And the, and the winning articles, you repeat them next month, um, and you just get better each time. You know, I, and I hate to, to try to go and, and do, a, do a plug for another service to, hey, pay more money. But, hey, bottom line is just sending it out blankly from your email address out to the world, you don't know what's going on. And then with all of the, the spam issues that, that people run into, you got to be really careful and make sure that people can unsubscribe, that people can forward them to say, hey, this great article I got from, from Thomas Young at Intuitive Websites, you have to check it out. Yeah, absolutely. And they're going to forward it. Yeah. Guess what? If that all that information is there, what vertical response and constant contact provides, they're going to get it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've heard estimates that triple uh, your, your readership for, for forwarding sometimes quadruple. So if you send out to one to a thousand people, you can assume you're actually sending out to four or five thousand people. But it's got to be good. That's it's got to be good. good. That is the key. And one of the ways to find out if what you're doing is good is is to talk to your customers, talk to the people that are on your website. Uh, we're obviously a big advocate of usability testing, and we've done hundreds of users and seen how they react on websites. If you are not watching people interact with your website, then you are not really serious about internet marketing. You have to see what the real user is like on, on, on your site. And, and, and it could be that you just bring a handful of people in, put them on a computer, and have them give you feedback, have the, you know, show them what they would do, or a simple survey. Pick up the phone and just call a few people and get feedback. Ask them, ask them, what is this website about? It's, it's amazing how many times the target market will look at a website and not really be able to figure out that there's any alignment to them. And most of your clients will actually go through and will be able to tell you, hey, this is what I'm looking for on a website. This is what annoys me when I go to a website. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. And if you're in your own vacuum of your own company, you just don't see things the way other people see them. Yeah, you're in you, your own you, jargon. You're in your own jargon. We've seen that so much. Speaking of jargon, one of the things I definitely want to get across since this is Greatest Hits, uh, so many websites have no keyword focus. Uh, what are the keywords that your target market would be likely to use to find information about stuff like yours? Is your site focused on those keywords? I mean, if, if you have those, if you know what those keywords are, and if you don't, you really need to do the keyword research, uh, you should then focus your titles and your headlines on those keywords. Otherwise, no one is going to find your website, and that's a bad thing. And if you're a CPA, please don't put accountant in every other or in every single line. Yeah, target for, your for keywords. Important. For accounting. See our accountant. He's yeah, the best a, accountant ever. <laughs> there the, are a, there's several things we talked about as far as driving traffic, and search engines are certainly a priority. Pay-per-click advertising on, on Yahoo and in Google definitely mustn't look into that. And, and the concept of optimizing your pages and targeting the right keywords, not too competitive, uh, not the massive keywords like accountant, Absolutely. but, but pro link, probably like Colorado Springs accountant or Denver link, accountant. Link exchanges. And leak exchanges. Is a great way to do that. If you're a great accountant, find right articles and do great link exchanges. 
Absolutely. So, so guys, what are some things that people should really, really focus on? We know this is greatest hits, but as far as focusing on it, getting back to basics, what are some of the things they need to focus on? I'll, I'll give you my list. Uh, great content, PES the conversion, scannability, ease of navigation, use your stats, keyword research follow, leading to SEO, and user testing, user testing, user testing. Tom? Well, and you know, I, I think that's a pretty complete list. What we want you to do is, is go back and listen to our podcast. I mean, our philosophy at Intuitive Websites is basically if we have information, we're going to get it out to the world. I mean, we, this is what the podcasts are doing. They're free, and they're loaded with, <laughs> with tips as far as, as how to improve your websites, how to improve your results, and how to make money with Internet marketing. So, folks, keep listening. And remember, this has been the Intuitive Websites Internet Marketing Podcast. And for more information and to see all the available podcasts and much more, visit intuitivewebsites.com.